there's this weird thing where you just, you see, you see this, I see this on the bus, I see this on the subway, I see this on places. Women just flipping through their phone, flipping through their phone, flipping through their phone. Can't you have a husband and some babies? That's great. I mean, the number of times I go to, to, to the play centers, that's sort of drying up now, my daughter's getting older. Go to play centers? I just saw one the other day. Went to a play center. There was one four-year-old boy at the top of the play center, sitting there, staring at his hands. <sighs> his mother was down on the bottom floor, her face buried deep in the nothing dopamine disposal system called a cell phone. It's nothing. It's empty. What did my third cousin have for lunch yesterday? Yeah, that's worth missing out on your children for. That's worth not playing with your children for. Maybe someone found me cute on Tinder. Ugh. The cell phone can really, social media can really transmit your mind. It can transmit some surface cleverness. It can transmit how you look, what you ate, your biceps, <laughs> your abs. How often can it transmit your virtue? Well, I use Twitter. I think it does a fairly decent job. But we got robbed of our families and we were given two-dimensional dopamine dispensers called cell phones. It's like when the British people after the Second World War gave up their empire in return for the welfare state. It is a bad, bad trade. So I just wanted to uh, mention that because, uh, well, it's been on my mind. That's very true. I mean, people, they don't have a connection anymore because everything they do is through a third party. It's through a cell phone. People don't talk as much one-on-one. -on -one. I'll, I'll go to class and before the before the teacher comes in, everyone will just be sitting there silently on their phones. And, you know, I'll, I'll try to talk to them and start up a conversation. Can't compete. And, you know, I, I ask people things and, and no, they just, you know, they look, they don't answer and they go right back to their phones. A friend of mine's daughters went to a party and everyone was on their cell phones. Oh, God. They called. The dad said, come pick us up. It's nothing happening here. Yeah. They're in the same room. And yeah. on cell phones. I was uh, at a restaurant the other night and I saw a father working on a laptop and his two children with iPods or whatever it was and they were playing games and they had they were hooked up to chargers on the table you know those little portable yeah. chargers yeah yeah so this was not a little one-time thing now okay occasionally you know I got to check something well it's fine but this yeah. constant thing it's turning young people's spines into question marks, but not the right kind of question marks. And of course, 90% of your communication is nonverbal. And every time people think that they're getting connections through cell phones, their, their social interaction mechanisms, their social interaction skills are atrophying. Yeah. It is a terrible substitute. It's like a pill that gives you the illusion that you're full. It just means you're not having proper food. And this yeah. is a pill, a drug that gives you the illusion that you're connected, that you have some kind of connection. And people sleep with their phones under their pillows. It's the first thing they see when they wake up in the morning because most people use it as their alarm clock. It is, they check it in the middle of the night if they wake up. They can't stop the dopamine drip of the next stimulation. And what happens is, like porno in, in pornography and a pornography addiction makes sex far less stimulating. And this addiction, literally this addiction, to electronics is making mere human contact and connection unstimulating face-to-face -face conversations are boring relative to scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and see that's um that's actually another issue that i had with my boyfriend now is that um you know i told him i don't want to raise my kids on tablets i don't want to let them you know just scroll through their tablet all day, all day long, you know, you're in the grocery store and all you see is kids on tablets. Their parents are just 
wheeling them around in the cart. They're just sitting there scrolling. You know, I, I don't want my kids to be raised that way, but, you know, he's he's not against it because he wants them to be technologically inclined. <laughs> well, he's not against it because he spends his face, he spends his days with his face pressed up yeah. against a gaming screen, right? Yeah. No, listen, it's tough to engage kids in conversation. Their attention spans are short. You've got to downshift everything. And so what happens is every time you stuff a, you stuff, you shut them up with tablets. All you're doing is you're training yeah. them to become better at not having conversations and you're training yourself to be worse at having conversations. Yeah. And that is, you know, I, if my, my, my daughter has access to a tablet, which she uses sometimes for education and occasionally she'll watch a couple of videos and all that. Yeah. But uh, no, if we're having a conversation, there's no tablets at the table. There's no tab like there's no tablets when we're having conversations. They're not around because you can't yeah. compete. You know, it's it's like taking a, a, a six year old to Chuck E. Cheese, having them stare at twelve different screens of uh, I am a little bear, <laughs> right? I mean, they can't concentrate. Too much stimulation outside. You know, you, you need to get into a low stimulation environment for human conversation. Why do people listen to us? Bridget, you and I, we're talking for almost an hour and a half today. Why are people listening to us? Because people, like we are performing an arcane magical art called a conversation. And people have probably lived many, many years neither having nor hearing a conversation like we're having. Yeah. Yeah. Our, our, this show is like the Renaissance Fair, you know, like, or it's like the Amish. This is how they used to do things in the oldie times. Yeah, you know, I, I always try to have deep conversations with people and nobody ever wants to have an actual meaningful conversation. They just want to talk about all things that are shallow. No one actually wants to talk about the, the wonders of, of life and the mysteries and, mm -hmm. you know, why are we here? What is it about? And this is they why just, I said you're not shy. You're not shy, Bridget. You're just bored.